this key on top of it. If it's still loose, there's a dial underneath that you can tighten up. base cleaner, okay? This is just essentially lemon juice. And you want to dab it on a rag. If you have gloves, you can use gloves. Uh, it's not corrosive to your hands, however, it will dry your skin up. Okay. It smells like lemon pledge. You need more lemon pledge. Can I use this? I wouldn't use lemon juice because it may be a little bit too acidic. Okay, so dab it on, and what you're going to do is you're just going to rub it into your skis, and essentially what you're doing is you're just cleaning the base of your ski and removing any dirt and grind from it. Shake out your rag and get it good and clean. If you have residual wax, you're going to have to work really hard. So what I do is if um, if there's wax on your skis, so if you look at Gabby's skis over here, which one? There's wax. What I do is I put the I put a little bit more wax base cleaner on it and let it sit, and then I'll come back and I'll scrape it off. Okay. So let's do that. Smoke is a, a, a bad thing. Um, you don't want to breathe it in, although <clears throat> iron wax is, is not bad for you. It's still smoke, so we don't want to, we don't want to breathe it in. Um, don't put the irons face down. Uh, it's not plugged in. No, even if it is plugged in. No. Never put it face down. One thing you never want to do is mix waxes. Okay? So some irons are made for glide wax, some irons are made for grip wax. A good iron, like this one, has a flat face and no pores. Okay? Um, this one needs to be wiped down because it's got some grit on it. And you don't want to, you don't want to iron grit into the bottom of your smooth bases. Okay? You never want to keep the iron in one spot. The iron is always moving and only enough to wax to melt the wax. Okay? The skis themselves are a porous material, so much like your face, when you put hot water on your face, your pores open up. Okay? The same thing with the skis. When you put heat to the skis, the pores open up and it allows wax to go into the pores. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to go along. I'm just going to warm the ski up. Notice there's not much wax on these skis at all because the iron moves pretty freely over top of it. Or you can feel that grinding. The glide wax is also temperature dependent. So if we were to look at this chart, you guys want that one? Generally, the darker the color of wax, the colder it's for. Okay, so with this wax by uh, Swix, or Toco, I should say, you can mix yellow, pink, and green. And to, depending on what you mix, you get a certain temperature. Okay, so for today, it's, say, zero to five degrees Celsius, or so it's between minus five degrees and five degrees Celsius. So we're hovering around zero right now. So what we're gonna do is look for 
and temperature that is going to give us some warm wax, which is the yellow, with a little bit of the medium wax, which is the pink. So that means I'm going to put in a little bit of pink and a lot of yellow. And I like this kind of wax because you can put it together like this. Okay. Generally, if the wax melts off the iron, it goes on pretty good. So I'm going, what am I going? Mostly, mostly yellow. Mostly. mostly yellow. Okay, so I'm going to put the yellow forward. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drip it along the side of the ski. And I'm trying not to get it in the channel in the center of the ski. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and smooth out all this wax and put it in. And I generally go back and forth as opposed to side to side for a couple of reasons. That's the way you ski. And also you want to keep it out of the channel of the ski. Okay, so if you don't get it all dispersed right off the bat, don't worry about it. We'll do a second pass. So I'm going to heat it up a bit more. But you notice that my iron is always moving, never stays in the same spot. If it does stay in the same spot, you have a better chance of delaminating your ski. Meaning that you'll heat up the glue on the base of the ski enough that the base of your ski will come off. Okay, so this one's a little tricky because you get that. So all I'm doing is I'm just trying to make sure that the portion that comes in contact with the snow is covered. center sides flat. Okay, so I'm going to start in the center. Don't press hard. Never press hard. Okay, so I'm going to use, uh, these are called channel scrapers. Okay, and some of them are made to fit right on the channel of the ski. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to hold it nice and steady. And I'm not pressing hard. I'm going to bring it to where the channel stops. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to press against the other side. Okay, we're going to let Ryan finish that up. And then, you have these little hook parts. Those are for generally the sides. And what you're trying to do is, you're just trying to remove any wax on the side. Because when you use cold wax, it will chip. Meaning that if you scrape the top, you'll take a bigger chunk off it. So you're trying to just clean everything up because you do ski on the side of your ski quite a bit and you want to remove anything that's going to prevent you from being able to glide nice and easy. With the flat, you always go full length of the ski or full length of the wax zone that you're working in. Okay, so I'm going to start with the tip. And again, I'm not pressing hard. I'm not trying to dig the wax out. I'm just trying to scrape it off. This one's just got a big ball of wax there. I'm sure. Yeah. So, about a 45 to it, or 
even a uh, somewhere between 45 and 80. And you're going to go full length. But eventually, you're going to get this all flattened out, okay? And you want to go in a straight line. The reason why you want to go in a straight line, if you start going sideways, that's not in the direction you ski and you're actually making it more difficult to ski, right? So you want nice long strokes. Nice flat brush. And then you'll notice it'll get shiny. And that's when you know you're doing it right. Okay, so I got a couple brushes. You got a brass yeah. one there? Oh, uh, it's horsehair. Horsehair, okay. So it's, uh... Don't put the brushes uh, face down. <laughs> Here's special red. This is probably a good wax to use today. Uh, so special red. It says uh, for fresh and fine grain snow, and the temperature is minus one to plus two. Okay. So we know it's going to warm up a little bit. So when we go to put that on, it might be a good good thing to use. You got um, your extra violet. Okay, that's a good. Good one for today, zero to plus one. This is getting into wet snow. Okay, and then you have your Arctic stuff, minus seven to minus 20. Okay, it's a white, really hard to put on. You gotta work hard to get it on. So where's our grip zone? Uh, I just go with the middle lines, usually. Why don't we, why don't we try it from here to here? Okay. We'll just do this, okay? So when I wanna, Put grip wax in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on very thin, very thin. And the warmer the wax, the goopier it's going to be. Okay. Then I'm going to get a cork. Do you have a clean cork? Relatively. Now some people are very particular about their corks, and yeah. they have a cork for every wax. every wax. Okay. So don't just grab somebody's cork and start using it. You got to make sure that's in there. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and just smooth that out. And if you notice what I did, is I didn't go right to the very end. I gave a little bit of space in between because I'm going to wax up to that area. Can you just hold that ski down? So I'm wreck it. So very thin layers. Crap. <laughs> Good thing we're not in the sandbox. <laughs> yeah. That's why you want to clean the floor. Clean that up. Very thin layers. Once you heat up the ski, it goes on a little bit easier. between the glide zone and the grip zone. You can feel it though. Yeah. yeah, so if you put your finger, you can feel it or see. Okay? You can also wax right over top of old wax. Um, it's best to scrape it off because the, the higher you make it, the less grip zone you have, right? Um, but the tape I have on there, I can wax right over top of that if I wanted to. 